Last night during my live chat, there seemed to be a lot of talk in the comment section about the 10 millimeter. Well, I didn't really address these comments directly, and I had a lot of people wondering, well, why don't you like the 10 millimeter? It seems like you don't hardly ever talk about it, and some of the comments you've made in the past make it seem like you think it's a bad choice for self-defense. Well, to be honest with people, I think the 10 millimeter round is a really bad choice for self-defense. Now, I'm not trying to be controversial here, and I don't wanna piss off any of the young, upwardly mobile people that tend to love the 10 millimeter, so before you uh, choke on your rock star energy drink or get out your thesaurus and run to your phablet to type me an overly wordy response here, I'm just saying I don't think there's a real good way to carry 10 millimeter. And it's not because it's too powerful. You know, a lot of us remember the Harold Fish case where he got in trouble for using a 10 millimeter because it was too powerful. You know, and that never made sense to me. It was just kind of a case of bad representation on the part of his defense and a biased judge and a bunch of things worked against him. But in the end, that was overturned. Now he spent three years in jail because of it, but in the end, luckily it was overturned. So I'm not really worried about that. Never understood that argument anyway, that it's okay to use deadly force, but not extra deadly force. That just makes no sense. So I'm not worried about the 10 millimeter being a too powerful round, but it is a powerful round. And a powerful round takes a specific gun to be able to handle it. And I just don't think there's a lot of good guns out there that can handle the 10 millimeter round properly that are good for carry. They either tend to be big bulky guns, you know, like 1911 style guns that usually have a safety, which I don't consider okay for a carry gun. So that kind of eliminates them or they're just big heavy guns in general, you know, like a lot of the EAAs, etc. So 10 millimeter, because it is so powerful, tends to be in a big platform. That's not good for carry. Now you can get it in a smaller platform, like let's say a Glock 29. But that round in the G29 makes it a very unpleasant gun. I don't like that gun very much. I've owned more than one of them. I bought it a few times. In fact, I think five times. Uh, so and every time I get it, I'm like, I just don't like the way this gun handles this round. The frame flexes so much. I've never had so many feeding issues or magazine issues with any Glock I've ever owned that I do with the Glock 29. So I just think it's not a good mesh, that small polymer gun with the powerful 10 millimeter cartridge. You have to neuter the 10 millimeter too much to make it shoot easily in a Glock 29. So when you're considering 10 millimeter for self-defense, you either have to get a big gun, you know, like my 10 millimeter SIG here, something like this, something big and heavy that actually handles the round well, or you have to get something small that isn't easy to shoot very well, uh, isn't easy to get follow-up shots with, and just doesn't handle the gun reliably, you know, and neither of those are good options. You want either a gun, you want a gun that's both easy to carry and easy to shoot, and I don't think 10 millimeter has that platform available on the market right now. Uh, now you might be saying, well, the 357 Magnums are powerful and hard to shoot too. Yeah, but they come in revolvers. Revolvers that are heavier, but still easy to carry. They're not as bulky. You just put a good belt on, you can carry it. I'll be fair. If 357 Magnum had to be in a semi-auto gun, it wouldn't be a good caliber to me either. It does exist in semi-automatic caliber guns. It exists in the Kunins, etc. But they're big and they're heavy. And I wouldn't carry 357 Magnum if I had to carry it in a big, heavy gun. Uh, so a lot of people say, well, then if you say that it's just the platform, well, then if we put 10 millimeter in a revolver, it'd be good for carry. And there are 10 millimeter revolvers, but I really don't think that's a good option either because if you're going to go to the 10 millimeter in a revolver, you might as well just get a 357. The ammunition is more readily available. There's more variety. Uh, cost is pretty comparable. It's about the same. So you really don't have any advantages with a 10 millimeter in a revolver, but the 357 Magnum does have advantages. Uh, so, cause you know, with the 10 millimeter, you're going to use moon clips or special types of cylinders, you know, it's just more trouble when you could just use the 357 Magnum. So, you know, I'm not against 10 millimeter. I think the 10 millimeter is a great round. Like I said, it's the 357 Magnum of the uh, auto loader world, but that's the problem. It's the 10 mil, it's the 357 Magnum of the auto loader world. Rounds like that don't tend to do well in auto loaders. So it's a great round. We just need a good platform for it. And because it's a semi-auto round, I don't think it lends itself to a good carry platform. I just don't think it's going to be the best option ever unless you're wanting a big gun. If you want a big gun, then yeah, it's 
okay for carry. Uh, the round itself is exemplary. I mean, it's a great round. Uh, and if you're wanting to carry a big 1911, or like I said, or like a SIG P220, if you were carrying this, I'd be like, wow, you're carrying a gun that can handle most anything. But like I said, they're usually not high uh, capacity. You can get some that are high capacity, but they're monstrous. They're almost too big to carry. So either have to be willing to carry an enormous gun, which I'm not willing to carry an enormous gun for carry, and I think most people won't carry an enormous gun, so I don't think they're good for carry, or you have to carry a smaller gun that doesn't handle the cartridge well enough. Uh, you know, I don't want to have to be hurt by firing my gun. And I'll be fair, and like I say, once again, I'll say 357 Magnum sucks in some platforms too, even in revolvers. Like if I had to carry one of those Scandium 357 Magnum guns, I would consider that a poor carry gun choice because they hurt. I mean, I'm not gonna try to act macho, they, they sting. If I would had someone coming at me in a dark alley, I'd have to think to myself, well, you know, getting raped, you know, it kind of sucks but this thing stings like a dickens to shoot it. I mean, this hurts. So I'd have to say, well, which am I more in the mood for right now before I decided I was gonna use my gun? That's not something I need to be thinking about when I need to use my self-defense weapon. So, like I said, the 10 millimeter, I just don't think it's a good carry gun choice because of the physical limitations placed on the round by what is available to shoot it out of. So it's not the round that's the problem, it's the guns that actually can handle it, it's the fact that it's a you know rimless cartridge so it doesn't shoot well in revolvers, so the 357 Magnum beats it there. There's just a bunch of things that work against the 10 millimeter and less, less like, you, like I said, you want a big gun. So if you want a big gun, it's great, but most carry guns aren't big, they shouldn't have safeties, they shouldn't be real heavy and they should be able to handle the round, that's just not available for 10 millimeter, so I I just do not like 10 millimeter. I think it's a bad choice for self-defense when it comes to concealed carry.